Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast, is brought to you by the Friends in Recovery Community, a thriving network of individuals who are fighting back against the stigma of addiction. Join our hosts as they speak up about the real issues of addiction, treatment, and recovery. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast, is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, here are your friends in recovery. Welcome back, everybody, to Friends in Recovery Podcast. I'm your host, Jersey Ed, and my two co-hosts. Let's see, we got Barely Beth. I paused because I had to see who what, what her name was today. We got Barely Beth, and we'll find out why she's barely just in a minute. And we got, of course, Buckeye Bambi. It's looking beautiful for... You, um, she's a movie star. She is. We have a movie star here. She for just my got special signed, episode. Guys. Yeah, it's Bambi's special episode. Guys, stay tuned because we're going to have birthday a birthday show for Bambi, right? Yep. That's what we're doing. Yes. Bambi's birthday special show. Special birthday. That's right. That's right. So stay tuned for that. Um, If you want to get a hold of us, if you want to wish Bambi a happy birthday, call 800-989-6504. That's how you can get a hold of us uh, as far as the phone goes. And what else? We have uh, email at help at friends and recovery podcast.com. Email us individually. Carl will put up our shit underneath us. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> not shit, but he'll put up our <laughs> well put said. Our, our stuff underneath us. And if you want to go to our website, friendsandrecoverycommunity.org, that's where you go. And you'll get all this wonderful stuff from that website, including our meetings. Guys, I'm gonna before we start this birthday bash here, um, I want to um I want to ask everybody one thing. Um, and we've noticed the difference already. We want you guys to stop what you're doing right now. Pause the show and we'll wait. Okay, there it is. And I want you to, <laughs> I want you to, well, you have to play the show, show to understand what I'm talking about. Oh. But um, I want you to hit that subscribe button. If you just found us, if you Googled us, if you have the privilege to get a hold of us, I am asking each and every one of you guys out there, hit the subscribe button. It's so, so important, right? It Please. really, really is. And the like. Yep. The like, the like, the subscribe and watch us. Like if you hit that dinghy bell, right? Right. That right. dinghy bell thing. So we call it, you will get our show every Thursday morning at eight o'clock. I think it comes on yeah, eight and, o'clock and, every, and every, every Tuesday, Tuesday morning, every morning Tuesday morning. Well. Yeah. Every Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, whatever it is, but it'll tell you it's there. And guys, you know, we want this show to grow and uh, that's how we can do it. You know, so we can do a lot more if you guys start, you know, dinging that show. So yeah, that's what I'm asking. Please, please, please. I'm asking you guys to do that. Okay. And let's, let's see, let's see what our listeners do. Let's see if they, uh, all three of them, let's see if we get three more likes here. So <laughs> anyways, guys, um, purple hearts, of course, Bambi, uh, Beth gets black hearts cause that's who she is. And Ed gets Jersey Ed's gets blue hearts. I don't know why, but that's what it is. So um, please do that. And today is a birthday bash. We are going to um, celebrate Bambi's 23rd birthday here with us. And uh, yeah, don't lie. It's 29. <laughs> I'm sorry. 29. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is an honest program. <laughs> that's right. 29. I'm sorry. Hey, listen, at least you said it on me. So I was just <laughs> looking out for you. So, but before we do that, guys, I listened to this killer podcast, right? It's called three of seven project. Basically it's about God guns and running. Right. I know half of you guys are going to tune out right now. Wow. But That's quite it's, the, uh... it's amazing. Chad, Wright. He's an ultra marathoner. He's, he's, um, he's a Navy seal. He has a great story. Um, I, I was on a, um, it's called BYLR, um, build your life's resume, um, <clears throat> with Jesse Itzler. And he was one of the, uh, the co-hosts, and um, I just kind of followed him through and he does an amazing, it, just listen to it. It's called three of seven, Pro, three of seven project. They talk about everything on there, anything and everything. And there's a lot of good life information on there too. So just, just check it out, you know? And of course, Carl and Chelsea, right? We have a surprise coming up in a couple of weeks with that, but we won't say anything, but Carl and Chelsea over at Silver Pod guys. Um, I got some disturbing news yesterday from Carl. Book sales are down. 
Oh, yeah. No, Book sales are down. Free. Well, it so, looks like all four of our listeners already bought theirs. I know. Well, they can buy. It's Christmas time. They have to buy four more, guys. <laughs> That'll make eight books totally sold. So, <laughs> so show some awesome. love. <laughs> That's Brooks. it. Here you go. Here it is, guys. Let's see. Let's Sorry, mine's in the other room. Uh, let's rock that. Let's hear, well, Beth, Beth will go get hers later. But anyways, let's rock that so we can get uh, Carl to um, what you call it, his book sales go up again. That Bentley payment, man, it's not cheap. Gotta, it's not. I know. It's not a Hyundai, guys. It's not a fucking Hyundai. It's a Bentley. All right. <laughs> anyways uh, just tune over to sober pie and go listen to them and oh carl did commit guys to sending me two signed books <gasps> so i'm gonna get two signed books he's gonna mail them out to me and when i get them we're gonna auction them off yeah. um on here maybe we'll do it in a month and see somehow i don't know i don't i wonder if we're gonna auction it off or if we're gonna Whatever, we're going to figure something out, but we're going to have two signed books uh, of 366 fucking days sober. And I told Carl to put like the F bomb in there somewhere. So hopefully he'll do that too. So, anyways, we'll get girls, ladies, uh, him, her, them, this, them, I don't know, whatever. I, I listen, I can't leave anybody out nowadays. So um, that's true. <laughs> I, I listened to your show last week. You did an amazing job. I'm very proud of you, ladies. Thank you. Um, it was, we it missed was really you though. We it did miss you, good. Ed. That didn't sound like it. So, um, so here it is. I'm going to put my resignation in today, and I am. Nope. Completely... No, 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 nope. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. I told you once a year you get a break. <laughs> yeah, a break. and that was it. I know. All right. Okay. Well, we'll keep going. But no, so all, all kidding aside, listen to last week's show, um, and you'll hear Bambi and Beth talk about girls' talk. They talked about everything on there. Everything on there. So it was. All girl stuff. So listen to it. Even if you're a guy, it was a good show. Um, yeah, I really it was. It, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Beth Beth was like Jersey Ed at the beginning, right? She yep. introduced everybody. Yeah. Bambi, Bambi was like Bambi. <laughs> 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 right. I guess. I don't know. She was like Bambi. No, Bambi I'm was like, a movie star. Bambi on here. <laughs> you're here. A Buckeye Bambi. Oh, Buckeye, Buckeye Bambi. Bambi. Buckeye yeah. Bambi. Yeah, that's right. So, all right, guys, let's, let's, that's enough of that. Enough of you guys did good stuff. Good. All right. <laughs> now, I want to get on to the birthday show, guys, because it's, right. it's Bambi's birthday, uh, October 20th, right? And she'll yes. be, like we said, 29 years old. I had to yep. lie a little bit and say 23, but she'll, uh, she'll, it's her birthday, October 20th. So, what we decided to do because it's her birthday, we decided to give Bambi the spotlight. We asked her to pick, any reading from this book, right? Any reading. And I, I believe she chose to read what, Bambi? What did you decide October to read? October 20th, my birthday. October 20th. So we're going to share on that. And let's let's see how we can relate it all to Bambi's birthday. I don't and I haven't read it yet. So okay. I was saving it. I wanted it to be a surprise for me too. So I like that. Have you found your purpose yet? <clears throat> for my entire life, up to the age of 42, I had no purpose whatsoever. I drifted from job to job, hoping to find it in the world of work. After all, a lot of people seem to find their purpose there. Nope, I did not find my purpose there. I thought I would find it eventually. I had no idea I would find it in the halls and rooms of recovery. My sponsor, John Jay, showed me how to be fit for purpose. I watched and learned what it meant to fit ourselves to be maximum service to God and the people about us. Seeing my sponsor utilize his talents in his own way showed me that I, too, could be fit for purpose and look for ways to be of maximum service to others. It's not easy. I am still very selfish and self-centered at times. I get lazy or complacent. I get depressed or disheartened. And some days I just don't fucking feel like doing it. But without fail, as I stay the course, I find myself stepping into the life that my higher power has provided me, and I act with as much virtue as I can muster. That is my purpose today. Reflection. What is my purpose today? What talents can I bring to the people in the world around me? And daily challenge. Define your purpose. Ooh. What's your why, That's right? One. Yeah. That wow. Is, I like that was that. a deep one. That's a I deep was. one. He did that yeah. just for my birthday, I'm sure. He did. He did. I, Thanks, he did. Carl. Yeah. The purpose. Like, what What was the purpose of this day? Bambi was born, right? There you Bambi go. Bambi was born. <clears throat> Who knows what else? I'm sure there's people with sobriety dates today. Um, and the purpose for me today is I'm sober, right? I'm sober. 
You know, it's that's that's the purpose, I think, for anyone in recovery is to stay sober. But, um, you know, uh, the, the reading is is um, well, happy birthday again, Bambi. And I don't know how happy to birthday, tie Bambi. <laughs> I don't know how to tie it into your birthday, but, um, you know, uh, I drifted from job to job hoping to find uh a world, uh, you know, a world of work um, after, but, you know, I, I don't, I, I had like two jobs in my life or three kind of jobs in my life. I really didn't drift from job to job. I was, I guess, lucky, um, whatever that may look like. But, um, you know, I, I just, I, you know, the thing was I, I journaled today, something about like, about this, like, like I was a lost soul. Like, you know, this, 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 before March 10th, 1994, this reading did not exist in my world, right? This reading, this purpose, I didn't even know what a purpose was. I, my The only purpose in my life was not to be a good dad, not to be a good husband, not to be a good human being, to be a good drunk and be a good drug addict. That was my purpose, hands down. There was, there was no other job for me to do. Now, I was a good employee, I mean, as best as I could be. But that didn't even matter. You know, none of that mattered. There was no purpose except for getting drugs, drinking and finding out when I can get the next, you know, when I can get out to the bar and and make an excuse for everything. You know, I was even thinking about excuses like uh, that comes with the, that territory. Right. Um, I was working with somebody and I heard so many excuses and it kind of it kind of gave me some PTSD like like all these excuses. Cause here's the thing. When, when we make excuses, I think there is no purpose, right? There's no purpose to anything. Like, like we have to make these excuses, put up these lies, put up these fronts and wear a mask because there's no purpose, right? If I had a purpose, I wouldn't have to lie. If I had a purpose, I wouldn't have to figure out who I am. I mean, we're always figuring out who we are, but I literally didn't know who I was at the time. If I had a purpose, I would be, you know, I would be a good dad, a good father, a good husband, a good human being, you know? So that is where this reading took me to, you know? And I love, I love doing this. Carl and I had a, a talk yesterday and I, I, he goes, well, you know, what are you going to do for the show from now on? I said, we're going to do exactly what you guys do. We're going to read the fucking 366 fucking days. So <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I knew you guys were going to do that. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, when we were talking about it and, and, um, you know, we just, we're, he is so grateful. Like I am grateful. He wrote this book. I'm grateful. Um, I wake up every morning. I read this book. I didn't read this one yet, but um, you know, it's just amazing. Like, like it puts everything in perspective where I'm at today versus I even wrote my sobriety date down in my journaling today. Like, cause I needed to remember where I was on March 9th of 1994. I know where I was in March 10th of 1994, but where was I in March 9th? I was in fucking hell in March 9th of 1994. I really was. And I thought I was in even deeper hell when I went into, re when I got sober, but little did I know, right? I mean, how you guys can probably attest to this. Little did I know that I would it would be the best day of my life, March 10th of 1994, you know? And I don't know what you, your guys' thoughts are on that, but that's kind of where my head went with all that stuff. So ladies, what's your thoughts? Happy birthday, Bambi. Maybe we should let her go first, Beth, because you get your chance. Don't worry. <laughs> all right. Well, what brought, it brought to mind to me is um, <clears throat> maybe you have more than one purpose, but I feel like <clears throat> part of becoming sober, my purpose was to figure out who I really was because I really thought I had it all together. Really. I mean, you know, I became a nurse at 19, got my associates, my bachelor's, my master's, was a career focused woman, had a great job, great everything. And I thought I was all together. Truly didn't think I had any character defects, you know, <laughs> I mean, really didn't. I mean, I thought, oh, I've got like the perfect little life here, you know, mm. um, the um, kids, the dog, the, you know, whatever the numbers are, you know, and it was just perfect. And I really didn't see the things and the way um, that even though I wasn't drinking initially, I still had all those character defects, you know, mm -hmm. and I was a workaholic and I was, uh, mm. you know, an, an overeater. And I always had that obsessive nature and I always, the character defects were still there, but I had no, no idea that they were there mm -hmm. until I started working this program and you start really doing that deep dive, you know, and it's like, man, 
you know, I have been focused on the wrong things my entire freaking life. Mm. You know, I mean, it was about the house and the car and the mm -hmm. private schools for my daughter. And it was about, let's see if I can make the most money of any director of nursing in the area. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it was crazy. The things I wanted, the biggest house, you know, it was just, you know, and now it's just so different. You know, when we moved this time, I wanted the ocean nearby. That was my, I didn't care what kind of a house I lived in as long that's as it was awesome. Small. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted it small and near the ocean because that's my mm -hmm. happy place. Mm -hmm. But my whole priorities have changed. And um, and I agree that you have to be of service to others. That's like the key, you know, because we have to pass it on. Right. I mean, that's what we do. That's how this yep. program stays alive. Mm -hmm. That's how other people get to find out what their character defects are mm -hmm. and get to grow and figure out yes. who the hell they really are inside. Mm -hmm. But um, it's just when I think of my purpose, I think that the program's purpose was to show me who I really was. Show you who you really were. Right. That's that's right. Uh, that's amazing. Like and and you know what? Let's let's all even I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Let's go back before our sobriety dates. We never even knew who we are and never thought we would be who we are today. Right. No, never. Not, that's what I mean. Not Ever. at all. Yeah. And and that's just that just amazes me when we when we think that way and and kind of look back on things and 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 the other thing is you know being services of others that's what that's what this is Beth I think you always say you know you want to be services being serve serve others that's what yeah. you always you always talk about that and not that I forget that but you know what I think a lot of people don't realize that when they come into these, these rooms, of course, I'm getting better for myself, but for me to keep it, I have to, like we say, we have to give it away, have to give it away service to others. You know, that's a purpose guys, because when I was out there drinking, I, 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 I hoarded the Coke from you. I drank behind your back. I did everything, you know, without a purpose and, and without you in mind. You know, you're not, you're not going to get, you're, you're not going to get one up on me. Fuck you. I'm holding a, I'm holding an eight ball and nobody else. Right. <laughs> I mean, come on. That, that's what life was about back then. Now I am telling you my purpose overall, if somebody had to say, if, if I had to say it is just to be a good human, that's it. And I think all that rest will fall into it. Now, of course, there's work around that and all that, but that's yeah, my purpose. Being a good human doesn't come naturally to us, Ed. Mm, no, it doesn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an <laughs> asshole. You don't want to know what goes on around in this head. So. <laughs> it is not good human stuff up here, all right? <laughs> but Beth, what about you? What's your thought on this reading or, or where you're, what's going on? I really loved what Bambi said, like about just like she was focusing like her. She had a purpose, but it was just all the wrong things. Yeah. Yeah. And I really love that. So I actually I did a speaking commitment out at Alina Lodge in Jersey last night. And uh, my friend Chris asked me to come out and speak. And so I was like, great. And then, like, of course, 10 minutes before the commitment starts, he's like, I want you to do a talk about uh, the importance of the big book. And which was really wound up being super, super interesting because mm. For me, I wandered um, around and I I know today that I needed to, but I wandered around with no purpose for the first six and a half years I was sober. Mm. And I did not like Bambi, you had purpose. It was just not the right purpose to feed your soul. So for me, I literally had no purpose. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, oh, so I guess I have to get a job because I got to pay some rent and they mm -hmm. want money in the gas tank. But um, when I went through the work and I went through the steps, mm -hmm. I got a clean slate and mm -hmm. I got to be in the present moment and choose my purpose. And in order to do that, like I really had to dig deep, which I hate doing. And um, I had to really be like, what is going to bring me joy? And at the bottom of the barrel, way down deep inside, what brings me the most joy just joy is being of service to others mm -hmm. is helping other people find their joy or find their purpose or find their next level. And, um, you know, I, I was actually spoke about this last night that joy is a byproduct. Happiness is a byproduct. It mm -hmm. is, it is a result, mm -hmm. right? And, and the result comes my joy my results my you know icing on the cake comes from feeling that purpose feeling that i have something that i bring to the table that i have to mm. do 
So yeah. yeah, so that's my thing. Like I love having purpose and listen, like I can tell you like 32 years into recovery, like you lose your purpose once in a while. And yeah. sometimes your purpose needs to shift because you're just fucking bored. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. And, and I agree with you on, I agree with you on everything, you know, finding joy, the next level, um, you know, all that stuff, you know, keeping it simple, just, just getting out there and finding things that we could never even understand. Well, I can understand when I was drinking, like simple shit, you know, every day I write a gratitude list, three, three, and, and it's a book of three years. So I get to see the two. So I'm second year in. So I get to see all my gratitudes from last year Yeah, and I get to put new gratitudes on it on, on each day. And, you know, I need the whole book like every morning to write all my, all everything I'm grateful for. You know what I mean? Seriously, I really do. Um, And I can sum it up in one, maybe two words, sobriety and God, three words, sobriety and God. If I didn't put, if I didn't have that in my life, none of that stuff in that book behind me would ever exist. Never. I couldn't even think of something. I wouldn't even be grateful for the dope man because that motherfucker took my money. He (laughs) shot drugs. It was stepped on. The fucking bartender didn't pour me enough of fucking, you know, a shot in it, you know, whatever the fuck it was. I was never fucking grateful. Never. (laughs) Never, ever grateful way back when, you know, and, and, you know, shifting our, shifting our, our kind of our, our situations or our, our, um, you know, our purpose is, is human, right? That's what, that's what all those people out there do normally. Like they find another purpose. If this purpose isn't working, switching jobs. I, I, I found another purpose a year ago, right? Switch jobs. And here I am. I have a brand new purpose. And you know, my, my boss, I'm not going to mention his name, Beth, but you know him <clears throat> and him and I had an amazing talk yesterday. Right. Um, and uh, it was basically, I'm not going to say what it was, but it was basically about my opinion. And we talked things out for like an hour and we came up with a conclusion. And I was like, what the fuck? Why would he want that from me? Right. Like, why? Well, because I deserve it because he deserves it because the situation he asked me for something. And that's what sobriety brings me. And I'm not just talking about work situations. My wife, my my kids, you know, my daughter calls me almost every morning. She hasn't Sam call me. You haven't called me in like a couple of weeks, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, wow, dad guilt right there in the middle of the show. That's right, that's right. But that's you know the 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 purpose can switch, you know. And again, um, yeah. you know, when when we we do lose our purpose, guys, we do. There's you know, we will lose our purpose along the way. And that means to me that there's no growth, right? We all get stuck. There's sometimes we have no growth, we don't grow all the time. We have to get a kick in the ass to grow. You know, growth is growth is work. Growth is a, another purpose, right? What, what's next purpose we're going to? That would that's, that's why we thought. grow, right? We grow into our next level and our next yeah. purpose. Next and, level, yeah. So yeah. Your purpose changes. I don't think you lose your purpose. I think your purpose changes as you I change agree. And grow. Yep. Yeah. Well, some of us might lose it. I mean, think about it. Like, you know, I, I was in a dark spot a couple of years ago. You know, nothing crazy, no relapsing, but I was in a dark spot and I lost purpose. And it it it, it took I, mean, I don't want to go into the story, but it took something just to turn it around like this. And I was off to another, I was off on another road and my life was completely, it was the next, like Beth said, the next level, the next level. The and next I think level. honestly, like the older I get or the longer I stay sober, I don't know what it is, but the, the older I get, the more I realize that maybe we're literally going dark is really just the inability to let go of the current purpose mm. so that God can bring us to another purpose. Like our pride gets involved, our ego gets involved mm. and like, this is my purpose. When God's really just trying to pull you to the next, he needs you to do something else, but we get stuck in our human little box. And then, you know what I mean? Out comes, out comes the dark. Funny. Yeah. yeah, she's like, no, pet me. Um, <laughs> You're not paying attention to me, mommy. Yeah, that's a fucking dog. Um, but maybe, I mean, maybe that's what it really is. Like, maybe when we get stuck, it's because we just won't let go because we think we know. Mm. Or at least I'm pretty sure that's what I do. I don't know. I can say it's you, but it's really me. Well, yeah, and I think no. a lot of it is, is being afraid of change, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If we get comfortable in our purpose. And if you get comfortable in your purpose, then change is hard. It always is hard. You know, change. 
fear, fear. I'm reading this book called um, the 5 a.m. AM Club. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. Fucking amazing book. I'm only on like the 30th page and I'm like, I'm enthralled in it already. So I don't know if you guys ever heard the book called um, uh, the, the Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. So <laughs> this is, it is an amazing guys. If, if I can recommend a book out there, it's the monk who sold his Ferrari. Right. I'm not going to tell you what it's about. It's a fable, but it is it taught me in those 190 pages. It taught me about life. It really, really did. And and I highly recommend anybody who 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 reads. If you don't read, get it on the Amazon thing or whatever. What is it called? The uh, Audible. Kindle. And listen Audible, to Audible. Yeah. Audible. Yeah. I'm telling you. So now this book, the 5 a.m. Club, and they didn't even talk about the 5 a.m. yet, right? I mean, it's it's just it's it's amazing. So um it's called the 5 a.m. club. And he, he's just just spot on about life, about fear, like like we hold ourselves back because of fear. We hold ourselves back because of, 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 you know, because we think we are not good human beings. And once, once I know, or once we know that we're good human beings, think of the things that we can do. I didn't think I was that good at what I did until I jumped into the next job until I jumped off the ledge. And then I had this talk with my boss yesterday, one in, in, you know, one in my opinion on something that I could even never wrap my head around. I would be even be invited. It's nothing, no big deal, but just incredible. Right. I mean, just incredible. And so on and so forth coming down to South Carolina, that was fear, just jumping off the edge, selling our house from New Jersey and coming here, you know, but, if we don't try it, if we don't do it, it's not going to happen. Just like our recovery. Like I said, March 10th of 1994 was jumping off, right? Yep. March 9th of 1994 was the fear was, this is where I'm staying. This is where I'm good. I think I got a purpose. I'm not jumping off the ledge. Well, March 10th of 1994, I didn't jump off the ledge. I got fucking pushed. I can tell you that. <laughs> God was like, get up. Yeah. <laughs> so I could tell you, I, I was not definitely not a, not, a willing I mean, participant. Um, no fucking way, dude. No way. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you want to know why. Can I just yeah. say, I love people, people that say when I got sober, you didn't get fucking sober. God got you sober, <laughs> motherfucker. That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. That, I, no, I, you're right. You're you're right. Right. I kept myself sober. No, you fucking didn't. Yeah, that's and right. And if you did, you don't subscribe to the twelve step uh, mm. philosophy. Period. Well, I mean, when God, you know, when God, listen, I, I'm trying to think and talk here at the same time, Beth. That's a bad idea. <laughs> it is a bad idea. So. Multitasking. <laughs> I know. I know. But like, this, I I see people idea. like us, like all three of us, understand in 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 the hit of our core right in the center of who we be we understand that god keeps us sober like there are for real people in the rooms of alcoholics anonymous like real live meetings that they think they keep themselves sober like i went through the book so i could stay sober Mm -hmm. no you went through the book that's good for you but that's not why you stayed sober that didn't keep you sober in any way shape or form that's part of no it's not either god's keeping you sober he's not but the reality is, is that all the stuff that we do is a quality of life issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You go through the book, you're going to be happy, joyous and free. You're going to feel purpose. You're going to have all this shit. But how many people do you know? And really think about this. May it, Bambi, you may not have experienced this, you know, in your virtual, virtual world. But hey, easy over there. We, we need to talk about that. But go ahead. <laughs> but, like, how many people do you know that have 40 plus years? And if you sit in their chair at an AA meeting. They lose their fucking shit. Yes. Yes. That is true. Right? Yeah. You know who I'm talking about. Everybody, mm-hmm. every home group has that like guy yeah. or old lady who are yeah. just fucking piss and vinegar and think they're running the show. Yeah. yeah. When the new guy sits in the in in the old guy's chair, you're like, oh man, he's gonna fucking get it. Dude, you don't tell you're him, gonna him. <laughs> Well, I yeah, bet dude, I would have been uh, that person last night had you I got to go been. to the meeting. Yeah, what? Yeah, what uh, yeah. Give us an update on your meeting. I heard oh. that you were going to go to an in-person meeting. So yep. how would it go? I was all cleaned up, had my hair done, makeup, all that stuff, ready to go. We walked in the door after cardiac rehab for Matt. We walked in, and he got. Uh, he's not on call this week, but 
but he got a page from his um, the CEO of the company and asking him for help on this project. And he said, oh, I'll only be a few minutes. I'll just be a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. so he goes to his office and he shuts his door and I saw him at 10. Oh my God. <laughs> damn, he's <laughs> like, it's just not meant for me to go to that damn in person meeting. But then Ed kind of jinxed me, I think. It's all Ed's fault. It's, Ed, it's definitely Ed's fault. <laughs> I, I I heard that on the show. I'm like, no way. I'm like, there's no way you're going to an in-person meeting, Bambi. Because and I need to tell everybody why, okay? Because Bambi runs the whole friends and recovery community. She's the face yeah, she of does. it. And she's on almost every meeting. She does everything for friends and recovery, just like you guys know. Some of you guys know. But I was like, and Beth suggested, and I'm like, Beth, if she fucking leaves. I said, right. What did I say? You're taking you said, over. You said I was taking over <laughs> to which my response was hysterical laughter. <laughs> That's what it was. Absolutely. <laughs> I didn't even say words. I just. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Saturday is the new plan. So Saturday at 7 p.m. You're going to go Saturday at 7 p.m. You're going to go to a real meeting. Well, unless I'm, you know, we play Penn State this weekend. And uh, yeah, there you go. Just tough stay teams. If I'm in a horrible stay on a Zoom meeting. Yeah, just stay in Zoom. I, I don't know if I could take it. <laughs> I'd walk in there and someone would have a Penn State hat on and I, oh. and I'd be out of me and I'd have to, you know. Yeah. You'd have to make amends. Yeah. I feel like in-person meetings is your next level. I tried. I really I did try. You have to keep trying. You Don't give up on God. We got to hire somebody before she goes to a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Do I got to tell you, Ed, she's going to kick your ass when she finally goes to an in-person meeting. And she's like, I've been missing this. Because I, know. Of Ed. I know. It's not because of me. <laughs> it is because of you. It's not because of me. Yes, she it is. chooses. No. Okay. It's because of me. <laughs> Always Ed's fault. It's always Ed, fault. you're too easy to talk into shit. I, I know. I know. Yeah. Hey, do you want to try this pill? Yeah. Okay. I'll try that pill. <laughs> I don't know what this white stuff is. I think it's Coke, but you want to snort? Yeah. No, but better yeah, you know. try it. See yeah. what happens. Yeah. So, but yeah. Yeah, old habits die hard, I believe. So, um, Bambi, you, you know what you forgot? You forgot to give a shout out. To our buddy. Oh, that's right. I have a shout out for Dave from in Germany. Um, he's one of our friends in recovery, comes to the noon meeting almost every day. And he is in, they call it a clinic in Germany, but it's similar <laughs> to like a rehab hospital because of some back issues. Mm. So oh, not wow. Drinking, um, but for his back issues. And he'll be yeah. there for a few weeks. So I've been keeping in touch with him um, through Facebook, checking on him. And, you know, he misses us all terribly. Aww. Speedy yeah, on, recovery, friend. Yeah, yeah, Dave, we we love you. He found us through the podcast. Yeah, he did. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, he found us through the podcast, and he came onto our meeting. So, there, you can't find an in person meeting through a podcast and go to that meeting from Germany Germany into fucking Florida, right? I'm just saying, I I might have a point there. I might have a fucking point. You might have a point there. <laughs> this is sad. It's sad. It's a sad, sad existence that I live in. No, no, it's um, not. No, it's not. I love my life. I love my life. Hey, I signed up for a marathon. Like, you know, the good old, you know, in like, person. In, no, I'm doing a virtual marathon. I'm, virtual. I'm running it right now. <laughs> That's the only way I'd run. Wait, virtually. hold on. Let me, let me get my sneakers on. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. I could totally do a virtual. <laughs> Find me up. Right here on my couch. <laughs> Oh my God. No, I did. I, I, you know, and, and that's again, you know, some of the things in recovery. So uh, I did sign up for a marathon at the end of December. And the reason why I brought that up is because I have a lot of, um, there's a lot of training in a marathon and you have to be kind of consistent with it. And, you know, there's some times in my life when I'm not consistent with things, even though I'm in recovery. Um, but it, this has to be, if I want to run that marathon, it has to, I haven't ran a marathon in a while, uh, in probably about four or five years, um, you know, just because of life and all that. And I, I was like, well, let me come back with a marathon. Like I, have my, you know, and, and I'm, I'm just, I'm not running it for, for the time. I'm just going to go there and do the 26.2 miles. And I'm that's done. amazing. You're yeah. just going to do it to do yeah. it. To do it. I'm going to let you know right now, Ed, you better mm -hmm. fucking stretch and you better take up some <laughs> yoga poses 
So I actually I have a sponsee who was training for a marathon when she was going through the work. And every single week I would meet with her and I'd be like, dude, I don't know why, but I'm constantly feeling spiritually pulled to tell you to do some yoga. And she's like, I know, I know, I know. She didn't. She like did something. I don't remember, but she was in a boot, didn't run the marathon. Oh, man. And oh. she was running under an eight minute mile oh, God. for a marathon. That's like great. This, this woman's a beast. Like when I tell yeah. you beast, she's a beast. Yeah. But she didn't. She didn't do the yoga. She didn't do the stretching. And she severely injured herself two mm. years in a row. She had to postpone. Oh, my uh, God. Because she did not do the stretching. Oh, my she God. stretches a lot and does yoga now. Well, I'm sure I she does. She does. <laughs> she does. <laughs> it's funny because because every Saturday I don't run. I do a. um um, you know, a cross training. So all, like ever, ever since I've been starting, this is five, six, six weeks into my training, I've been riding the bike and I, I pulled out my yoga mat and I put it outside and I, and this was just the other day. I said, I'm doing yoga on Saturday. So Saturday I'm going to do a, a our yoga class. And so uh, smart. Yeah. So smart. Yeah. But you know, and that's, that's, you know, just some of the joys of, of, you know, where life is today that we can make these choices, you know, and, and, you know, the other thing is the commitment, right? Like the commitment to this, like now I have to commit to all this. And, and, and if I don't say it on here, if I don't like, if you guys can see to my, my over there to my left, um, it's my calendar. That's, that's my personal. Oh, calendar. Yeah. That's what I do all personally stuff. That's, it's not work. It's my big ass calendar. That's on my wall. And I put any of my hikes in there, my runs, my, you name it, it's in there. So, so um, smart. you know, it's so important to have that. And again, this is another purpose. This, this calendar is a purpose in my life. You know, it's, it's, sure. you know, if, if I don't take care of myself personally, then professionally um, in, and even, even in my program, it's not going to be good. You know? Uh, so w- what I'm getting at is I think I'm going to bring it back to purpose is that Bambi said earlier, is that I think we have a bunch of purposes in our life and not just one, you know, not just why am I here? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in recovery. I'm going to spread the word. And that's bullshit. You know? Yeah. You can spread the fucking word, but there's more to life than spreading fucking AA all the time. You know, the story. Yeah, it, it is. And you say it all the time, Beth. And, and, you know, is it good to preach the word? Yeah, absolutely. But there is, I didn't come into AA to fucking sit in a fucking chair and, and, you know, drink coffee and smoke cigarettes all day. I just didn't, you know, yep. Um, yeah, otherwise I'd better off be sitting at the bar and at least getting drunk. You know? Same thing though, right? Seriously, it is same thing. Yeah, so, you know, be. yeah. So AA does teach us to have a purpose. AA does teach us to, um, to go have out many there. Purposes. To have many purposes. Yes. To have many purpose to get out there and, and, you know, not go to an in-person meeting because you've been going to zoom for the last three Ew. years. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, I I don't know. I mean, what what what's your thoughts on this? Everybody's uh, Bambi's Bambi's birthday. We talked about purpose. We talked about a lot of good things. We talked about all kinds of purposes that we have. I'm going to ask everybody here: just come up with one purpose in your life right now. And we're going to close the show, and and we can you guys in the chat room or comments below put a purpose, just one purpose, not ten. Not don't even think about it. There is a purpose. For each of us and pick one of those purposes and put it into the chat or into the um into the comments below because we really want to know what your purposes are so bambi since it's your birthday what do you think your purpose is right this very moment this very moment this very moment um Mm -hmm. i would say my purpose is to be a good dog mom Mm -hmm. and you know why because we had a little disturbance earlier and our big dog went after one of the little ones so we've got um training to do and some stuff so right now that's priority for me you know mm. gotta gotta do some dog mommy stuff mm. among a- my many purposes but i did get sober for my pugs you know that's <laughs> right dog mom so <laughs> if if anybody can't if anybody's not watching you're listening beth before had a dog hanging on her head and now she has a cat like wrapped around her neck, holding her fucking microphone, sitting on a fucking couch. I don't know. We're going to have to have a talk after this. She's chewing. She, he's <laughs> chewing the microphone. 
<laughs> I'm surprised <laughs> mine's not doing that because, but he's asleep here beside me in the floor because oh, that's you got a cat too, right? Crazy. She's yeah. got a beautiful blue eyed cat. This is yeah. Siamese. Enough yeah. of cats. Listen, do not talk about cats and getting cats because cats. I, I, no, Stacy wants a cat it, and cats. wants a cat. No, cats are the best. Look at this no. little, little look at this little munchkin. No, it's he, not. He happen. wakes up every single morning and chooses violence. Who does not want that? Who's his violence? Yeah, oh, yeah. 100% chooses <laughs> violence. All right. Oh Stacey will have to. <gasps> oh, there you go. Oh. Get. Look, Charlie, that's a that's a real cat. That's a purebred cat. Oh, oh yeah, he that feels insulted. This girl cat that, you know. That's cat, actually a boy. It's a boy, yes. Boy. Came home as Danessa and um, two days later became <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> Daniel! <laughs> Hi, Charlie. Oh, Charlie's insulted. Charlie left. He's going to go violent. Daniel. He's going to be violent somewhere. <laughs> well, Beth, what's your purpose? Bambi was to be a good dog mom, right? Right this moment. I honestly, I I feel that we're in the stride in the in as the Balabans as um, really guiding to adolescence into adulthood. I really feel like that's um, that's that's the core purpose of of, mm. of this entire household is is guiding these two into what they want to be instead of what yeah. we want them to be. So uh, I love it. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's a great purpose, man. That's a great yeah. purpose. It's an honor. I have to tell you, it really is. It's an honor that I get to hate them so much sometimes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Man, Bambi, you hear me? You guys hear me? You've been through where I'm at now. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I'm there. I'm in the thick of it, and um, yeah, that's my purpose is just helping them get on the path they want to get on. So right. that's my purpose. And uh, and that's that's a great purpose because like if if we're not on that purpose with our kids, they're fucked, right? Yeah. They're fucked. Seriously, I mean, uh -huh. you, you know, I mean, it, it, think about the drinking. If you know, if you were drinking and drugging, you weren't around. I mean, they would have no shot in hell. It, it's it's a tough shot right now, and you're 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 involved. You 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 and Dan are involved. You know, yeah. but it's 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 a uh, it's, it's, it's hard. A, yeah, it's it's a tough life. So, yep. um, I think my purpose today, um, <clears throat> you know, again, it changes all the time, and and just because of that conversation that I had yesterday with work. Um, because work is a big part of my life. Um, you know, I I uh I always say it's like the biggest part of my life is is work and then everything else comes in between. So I have to shrink that work box down a little bit, but um is to guide a team that I was um blessed to be in charge of, not even in charge of that I was that I'm a service to, right? Because of all my knowledge throughout the years, um, and just to give this team the best shot in hell that they can succeed with with some of my past and understanding and their talents, you know they're gonna they're, they're, they they are succeeding that they're going to they are succeeding, and it's not easy, right? It's not easy, and uh, you know sometimes you want to say, oh, don't do it this way, do it now. You just you know you just have to let them go, and it's just like kids, you know. I guess I guess it's all that years of being with the kids that, you know, I have the understanding of, of this position I'm in today, you know, and of course there's other purposes, but the, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Like I said, because of that, um, the conversation that I had yesterday and just totally blew me out of the water yesterday, completely blew me out of the water. So, um, you know, I, I, I want to thank my boss, Ed, for, for having that wonderful life conversation that we had yesterday and you never know where it's going to come from right guys you just never know it's true like, ed and i i think honestly not to be personal but like i'm really glad that you had that experience because you have so much to offer and i don't think you even remotely realize how talented and experienced you really are mm -hmm. it's it, stacy says it all the time and you're right at 100 i don't i really don't you know and i'm starting to learn um Good. I'm starting to learn. I'm not, I'm not there. I'm not even close to being there, but I'm starting to learn and listen. So, uh, and you know, the, the shitty part of it is, is that I'm, and this is gonna sound like fucking conceited or, or, or no, it's not, people, is that I'm depriving people of my knowledge that I have that I can pass on that was passed on to me. You know, I, I, I learned this stuff from other people. I didn't, you know, right. of course I added my touch into it, but now I'm going to stop it and, and not give it to somebody. So that's yeah, that's what I see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's like our program. Like the, the program, right? Yep. You yeah. don't get to keep it. No, you don't if get to. Somebody no. didn't pass it on way back then, 1935. 
we wouldn't mm-hmm. be here right now having this podcast. True. Yeah. It is true. It is true. Well, ladies, happy birthday, Bambi. Happy uh, birthday, Bambi. Uh, we, Thanks, we we wish you have a great day on, in, on your special day and do a lot of fun things. Eat a lot of cake. Got a um, lot planned. Good, good. And just remember when you get to the seventh piece, piece of cake, the eighth piece ain't worth it. So just stick okay. to seven. All right, seven. Okay. <laughs> yeah, seven's good. Seven's good. Yeah, absolutely. So the eighth uh, is where you start counting calories. That's yeah, where- yeah. Oh, it gets a little it gets a little fattening at the eighth. Seven, piece, so. seven pieces, no calories. Yeah. Eight pieces, all the calories. <laughs> all the calories. Yeah. Stopping it just it seven. goes all the way back up to from yeah, zero. Yeah, it goes all the way back to piece yeah. one. So exactly. just stop at seven. Exactly. Okay. Absolutely. Seven is it. Yeah, that's it. So, um, yeah. So enjoy your birthday, Bambi. This is a great show. Guys, remember, don't forget to subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, Beth, maybe we'll see you back on your couch again on the next show. Okay. I don't even think I'm going to change my clothes this week. Fuck it. <laughs> You're just going to sleep. I'm on just the couch literally I'm not going to move until our okay. next show. All right. There you go. We're going to see if that's true. So stay tuned, everybody, for next week's show to see if Beth is in the same clothing. That's right? right. That's it. Well, ladies, you know what we always say. Stay sober, everybody. This concludes this episode of Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast. Follow us on Facebook for past shows and updates and enjoy free access to twice daily support meetings. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube 24 hours a day, seven days a week.